Is he done? Is he raced? Whew. Uh, yes, he is. Well, we run into our clients everywhere. We're at uh, Bob Littleton. No, where do you live? Peterborough. You drove here from Peterborough today? No, I came yesterday. Oh, my God. So Bob Littleton from Peterborough came here, and I don't die in my car. My God, I didn't realize how hot it was in Mount Gilead. Wow! What's the, what's the car say? 88, that's false. It's way hotter than 88. If you look behind us, you're going to see race four finishing up here. We were winners in race number three with... Those three there are not going so fast. Um, we were winners in race three with Whispering Song. It's too bad she took uh, it took all the way to Mount Gilead for her to finally race good. But she did race good today. Um, we're going to keep her in the Ferris and, and maybe hit the last Buckeye, I guess, and see if we can salvage some sort of a 2022 with this filly. But she was good today. Earplugs in 2-5, last half 1-1. One, one. She was okay. She was decent. Uh, we still have four more to go. I didn't realize we had five in today. I thought Jason was scratching Coupe de Ville, but Coupe de Ville mm -hmm. is here. She's racing today. Victor Cruz is racing. Slim Jimmy is racing. And Smoking Hot Irish Girl is racing also. So five in today. Five solid shots, I think. If Coop behaves, she should be fine. Um, but the reason I did this video before uh, the race is somewhat, after Whispering Song 1, was one interviews another one of our clients. I can't believe you come all the way from Peterborough till to today. I left Guelph this morning. I literally got here. We our post time for race three was 4:50. I got here at, at 4:38 from Guelph. Um, I was cutting it a bit thin because I want to do some work at the barn today and want to look at some horses. Want to talk to a number of the trainers. I, I'm sure you're aware we're moving. We aren't moving all of our horses up the first line. We can't. They can't accommodate all of them just yet. But we're moving uh, 25 or 30 of them up uh, on Wednesday. So everybody's scrambling around trying to pack everything up nice and neat. Um, I think that's a pretty good move for you, Anthony. Well, it's just timing, right? Everything, we, everything. We, always, we always talk about the timing of horse racing and the timing of what we're trying to do and accomplish right now. It's time. I guess is, is the, I guess the easiest way to, to put it. It's time for us to make a little move away. Tomiko is a nice track, but falling a little bit uh, 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 falling a little bit behind right now and, and if I step back and look at it how can we possibly be the biggest stable in Canada and operate in that manner it wasn't that things were bad right now but having some foresight and understanding that when the snow starts flying that track's going to be a problem it's going to be a problem and uh, we had the option I believe to take over renting that barn but then we would have to have the tractor we would have to worry about snow removal and keeping everything salted and sanded and the drains good and the water hot you know what we're just going to go to uh to up to first line where that's all done for you so um so we're going to head up there on wednesday harry polton's barn's going to stay behind because the way that they have everything structured until one other stable moves out of that barn in uh in october until that stable moves out of there harry would be scattered all over that big barn so i just said you know what why don't you just stay here because uh his his workers nelly and her mom rent an apartment from Tomiko Training Center oh, also. So it made much uh, the most sense just for them to stay there. So um, the other reason I wanted to make the video, other than to say hello to you, there's a smoking hot Irish girl right there. Uh, the other reason making the video was to introduce a new horse. Now today, I I bought back um, Grace. And, and I, you know, one of our clients, a good friend of mine, had said, I, I don't know why you'd buy that filly back. You know what? Yes, she has a lot of money made, but she only has two wins. She tried it in 55 and 3 over George and Downs last night, but that's the first time I f she felt really good to me in a while. It's been a while since she felt that good, and I think she's coming around. I think we have her diet under control. She was tying up really bad. Right. Not horribly. Enough to fly under the radar, but enough to actually cause her to race as flat as she did. So once we once we knew exactly what was going on, we you know we couldn't change everything all at once, but we got everything changed to the point where. This is how we train her, this is how we jog her, this is how we care for her, this is what her diet looks like. Once we got everything to the way we wanted it, last night was the culmination of that. Now it's frustrating that it took all summer. Um, you know, sometimes these horses don't really care what we think, I say it all the time. And um, the way she raced last night, I, I know she's going to win one, two, three, four races. I know she's going to be a player in the grassroots division. I know she's going to make the grassroots semifinals. And now that I know all that and we know how to how to uh, get her ready for the races, I just think she's worth more than that. $38,000, I, 
I'm trying to look at it from a buyer's standpoint. If I knew I could buy a Philly, well, my buddy Steve's Colt is similar to Grace. Hasn't really been on a tear the last little bit. Fits the grassroots. He also fits the Simcoe and a couple other things. Gets around a half net. Now, the difference is he doesn't have near as much money made as Grace does. But they, I think they end up getting paid very well. They're 48000 or something for that call. At the end of the day, you know what? I just didn't want to sell her for that. I just didn't. So we didn't. We kept her. Brave World did sell. We got $29,000 for Brave World, which I think was pretty fair. I told other all of our clients. A couple of our clients didn't think we'd get good money for them. I said, tw I said 24 to 28, likely in the 26, 27 range. We got 29. It was a decent enough dollar for Brave World. I was happy with that. And then Twinbee have an arrow, sadly. But the sad part of this industry, and people are starting to understand some of the finer points of it, I don't believe we got one live bid on Brave World oh, today. Really? Not a live bid. That was me at 5000 I started the bidding and it stayed there to the end. In fact, it's not that I don't know. I know we didn't get one live bid. Now, there's a, a horse set. We talk about how Whispering Song has been a little disappointing this year. Twinbee of an arrow has been straight up heartbreaking. Um, he's got speed. He's got talent. I guess... Uh, I'm gonna have to either, I'm probably gonna have to work something out with the clients that want out of that horse. I'll keep them, I'll double down even though everything in my head, every voice is screaming don't. Um, I will, for now. So, we kept that horse, but uh, the most important thing I thought of the day was we bought a horse. Now, uh, for those of you watching the sale, there were two horses, trotters, that were kind of higher end than the other ones. Uh, the Aki Svonstead horse, I was the underbetter on at 60, went for 62. Which I was okay with. He fit the Constellation next week in Pennsylvania, which is a wonderful selling point. But you have to race him after that. So you buy him for sixty. You buy him for sixty if we did get him. Race him. Hopefully he wins. You get twenty-five at back. Okay, you're fine. But what if he doesn't get the twenty-five back? What if he's sixth? Then you get a sixty thousand dollar paperweight. But it's not accurate. He only had one win. He fit the non two. two. He was second in the Beal. He might have been worth that money. Now in January, I had bid on a horse the day we bought. The day we bought. Kings County, I had also bid on a horse called Good As Him. Now, I thought Good As Him on paper might have actually looked a little better than Kings County, but there wasn't a lot of similarities. There were some, but there wasn't a lot. Now, the people that owned Good As Him bought him back for 72. They bought him back. Raced him. He's a brother to Father Patrick. He's a half-brother to Father Patrick. And they gelded him. So it took a lot for them to geld this horse. They must have. That was the last straw. They gelded him. He did win in 55 a couple of times, trotted in 53. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Anthony, you said you want to buy horses with less than six wins and, and room to move. You're right. But it's also not easy to buy good condition trotter. This horse trotted in 51. Now at Lexington, he trotted in 51. He's won in 53. He's trotted in 52, 53, multiple times in 55. And he only has 28 lifetime starts. So he has his entire future ahead of him. He's, he's, he's four years old now. So, um, I thought, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have gone much farther, and without naming names, the underbidder was a fairly prominent driver that had actually driven that horse before and uh, had messaged me after. So, knowing that he was bidding on the horse also was, it made me feel a little bit better about what we bought him for. So, good as him, a Cantab Hall brother to Father Patrick, uh, ready to go, we purchased him. Um, for $54,000. Now, I know there's a lot of people that have messaged me. I see four, five, six messages of people saying, I want 2%, I want 5%. Somebody said, I would like 10% of good as him. Can I get it? They're all time stamped. Relax. I'm going to go through them after we're done racing here today and uh, make sure we get everybody in that wants in on good as him. Before you ask me, where is he racing? I don't know yet. I have made my mind up. He might come to Ontario. He might go to the Meadows. He might stay in that area and race with either Mark Beckwith or uh, we had horses with a gentleman last year named Jeff Lieberman, who uh, I don't I don't know Mr. Lieberman, I never met him in my life, but uh, he'd reached out to me to say that he'd a stall empty if we needed somebody to race a horse throughout the rest of Plain Ridge, which is kind of handy because now we have a horse in Plain Ridge that, that has to race. So that might be an option also, but I, in, in fairness, uh, just to be loyal and, and kind, I'm gonna call Mark Beckwith first and say, hey, is there a place for this horse? Or do we need to move him to another jurisdiction? We can do either. Uh, it's not a problem. So I don't know where he's racing yet. I just know that we have good as him. We paid fifty-four thousand dollars U.S. dollars for him, and uh, he is now a stable horse. So race five is on the track. I'm in the six. You're in the six. Six, seven, eight. Driving in this race, right? Jason McGinnis is. I thought he was. 
Oh, maybe he is. I have no idea. I thought I saw him staying in the program. Oh, he very likely could be. No, no, he's not, because that's no. him over there with shorts okay. and a t-shirt on. But he could have. Maybe they scratched it or something. I don't know. Once in a while, you know, somebody will put Jason on the horse from down around here. You know, that's what we love about the fair is I posted a picture this afternoon. Do you have Facebook at all? I do, but I don't. It's not on Not right on your now. phone yet. Yeah. So I posted a picture this afternoon. It, it was a picture that my mother took of me halfway down the lane. I'm, like, celebrating winning with, yes. with Sintra. Sintra. But that wasn't the coolest part. It's a cool picture. Really nice picture. But if you look behind me, the entire far turn of that picture is packed full of people. And that pales in comparison to the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that were at the track. And, you know, it just goes to show you, like Dexter Dunn came up to me the other day and he said, hey, congrats, congratulations, you're a nice guy. He said, it must be so cool to win a race that prominent in front of your hometown with that many people there. Because he got it because he's from Australia, you know, all those small yep. little tracks you yep. race at. But when you jam 25, 30,000 people into a property, into one plant, and all those people are pumped, it's like the main event of a boxing match. It, it was, you know, I don't generally, I said this, I don't generally get too worked up about anything. You were, you were worked up. Well, it, it, I was a little worried you might fall out of the bike. No, 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 <laughs> there was no fear of that. But I did, I did, uh, I, I really think it was 13 years of frustration that just kind of exploded halfway down the lane. And at that point, when I knew there was no shot I could lose, you know, you look over, you look over and see this grandstand just full of people and the, the loud, the noise was just electric. It was, it was something. Have you ever been to the Gold Cup? No, no, I was actually, if I had have started earlier, yeah, I would have gone down. Yeah. But I decided to come to Mount Gilead instead. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Mount Gilead's pretty cool too. You know, my wife, she gets frustrated. You know, one, she's worried about my safety racing on a, on yeah. a fair track, but she gets. She doesn't love the Ferris the same as I do. My kids liked them, but you know, I'm from a small town. I love. I love. You know, the, the little family, like that guy, like walking around with your kids. Yep. You know, walk all the little families that are here, and they're out at the midway, out at the fair, and they're coming over to look at the horse races. That's how horse racing starts for so many people, and that's why it's so important to have fair racing in. in and this is why Ohio is somewhat a true gem. Exactly. You know, unfortunately, we got away from you. You mentioned when we were walking over yeah, there, I, fair racing you know, in I Ontario. I started at Lindsay Fair in Lindsay, Ontario. Yep. And I was at the Peterborough Fair for horse I racing. raced one day, and I didn't drive, but I was there. That right up, uh, right down on the 401. Is that Bowmanville? Is was there a Bowmanville Fair there? Right Bowmanville. And and right on the highway. Fair. They used to race horses there. Art Balson was stabled at the track. Okay. That would. Was that you know, there was a there was a little racetrack, um, not on the 401, but on Highway 35 150. This was right on 401. No, the Orno Fair. Yeah, Orno that's exactly Fair, what it yeah. was. The yeah. Orno Fair wasn't Bowmanville. I apologize. The Orno Fair was right on the highway, and right before you get on the 401. Yeah. You had to go buy it to get on the 401 every night. Yeah. And I remember. I went out with my, friends of mine from high school. We'd head up to the cottage every Friday night and stop at the Orno oh, yeah? racetrack. Yeah. Because they had races. Yeah. Had some friends and old horses. Yeah. Then we head up to the cottage, play play 36 holes of golf, I loved and then it. head home. I never, I never stayed at a cottage in Kawartha or, or stayed in the area. I worked there. I lived there. I lived in. Um, Ah, starts with C, the town right beside the next one over from Coburg. Or, Coburg. I stayed, I lived in Coburg for four months one summer. And, um, you know, when you're a kid and you're trying to get your, I'm trying to, I'm driving in Belleville, I'm trying to get my foot I in the door. I'm Belleville. Yeah. So I'm trying to get Tough my track. <laughs> oh. <you laughs> Ask know, Gila Rush about that yeah, one. He I went know, down a couple of times. You know, I think I was the only person that never got hurt at Belleville. I watched Gord Brown crush his heel. I watch people get hurt all the time, and you know we talked to James, James, my brother. You know he talks about the the little tracks. I said you've never seen anything like when we when Mark and I were kids driving. Mark to this day still has the pacing track record at Belleville. Oh really? Yep, yep. And uh, you know those little those little towns were always the cool. I always thought they were the coolest. So I like to come back when I can. I know that I got a lot to go, but I wanted to come here. One to race a couple of these horses today, but two I haven't really got to as many fairs as I wanted to this year. And their purses aren't bad here. No, no. And I mean, the thing, the thing people don't understand, like when we go to leave, they're cutting checks and saying, here, don't, yeah. don't forget your money. And you don't think it's a lot, but when you go, you know, we raced White Tiger in the Euro Row last night, he got zero dollars, right? And it isn't, and, and people see those little small amounts, 2,000, 1,000, 3,500, whatever, and you don't realize that that adds up at the end of the year. We had that filly two years ago, uh, Miss Meringue. 
not a very fast horse. She she couldn't beat two minutes and a pack of wolves were chasing her. But I think she made like twenty three thousand as a two year old and she strictly was on the fairs. So it's not a perfect situation. Like you do have to truck there. There are bills attributed. You're not making money for the most part, but you're not getting crushed either way. And it, it helps mitigate some of that. I, I think, think there's a horse in, in with hot Irish girl that smoking hot Irish girl that's I think it's just running the fairs and I think it's one close to forty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's, not, that's not a bad payday. No, and it's just, but it's consuming, right? We haven't yeah. been able, because we had such a strong Pennsylvania this year, we haven't had a chance to get to the fairs as much. And I, I don't mean that to sound like I've given up on them, but I can only be so many places. And if I can't be here to drive a whispering song, I don't know if Jason just says to himself, and I don't blame him, maybe we'll just race her at Northfield on Wednesday rather than coming to Mount Gilead. Because there's not a lot of drivers, right, to, yeah. to drive at these places. I guess so. you're going to have to train Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about Ollie, but I guarantee you. first race? What age were you? You know, my brother Mark and I, that's a great question. Uh, we raced at the two little fair tracks, St. Peter's and Panette, when we were kids. And um, I think Mark was 14 and I was 16. And and uh, he, it was a little bit of a, a little bit of foreshadowing. He gave me an awful good whooping the day that we raced there. <laughs> raced there a couple, I remember the one day, I never told Amy this, the one day we were on our way to connect. Mark and I, and my mother was driving us, and we broke down. The car broke down, and Mark and I hitchhiked to the track. In hindsight, it comes off as we left our, we abandoned our mother. <laughs> but but this is PEI. She had to wait for, for somebody to come and, and help. I forget what happened to the car. But Mark and I literally hitchhiked to St. Peter's to race that day. And uh, I don't even remember where if Mom showed up or not. She's still with us today, so nothing ever happened. Yeah. So um, it, it yeah, we started when we were pretty young, also, and it's just a different, a different atmosphere. Anyway, you got to, you got to drive, five. buddy. No, no, the fifth's going right now. Oh, it's going now. We don't have to get out of the air conditioning yet, yet, just yet. Uh, but I am in race six, seven, eight. So good luck to everybody. As I said, uh, obviously seventeen minutes. But I love talking to talking to clients when I run into them. Um, there's four guys sitting over the fence there, and he goes, "Hey, I got cheese it's here." Because in the video, I said, "I love when I'm driving eat those cheese it's The people at the fairs, like they, like. They're the people that watch these videos too, and it's it's a horse racing thing. So, what's the meal you eat here? Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna tell you what. You should walk around, and if you can find the apple and peach egg rolls, eat them. They're so good. I'm gonna look for some corn after a while. I know Jason is like Amy; he despises the fair also, but I like the fair. When I'm done here, I'm gonna have a little walk around. I think I'm gonna get some corn into me. Anyway, take care, everybody. Good as him. New horse to the stable.ca. He is a Cantab Hall four-year-old. Brother to Father Patrick and Pastor Stephen. Uh, just won his last start in 55 at, the, at Plain Ridge. I like him. I like him. It's one of those situations where I'm wrong. I'm not going to be really wrong. I might be a little wrong. But I think I'm right. Anyway, take care, everybody. I will talk to you again after our next four races. Take care.